Come thou long expected Jesus. comes from the Latin word eventus, which means coming. Advent begins the church's liturgical year, starting with four Sundays before Christmas. The season of Advent has been set aside as a time of preparation since the sixth century. Advent is a time for preparing for Christ's second coming even as we remember and celebrate his first coming at Christmas. This is why the color of the season of Advent is purple, which symbolizes forgiveness and repentance. On the fourth Sunday in Advent, we will light a rose-colored candle as we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus, to whom is attributed that great song of joy, the Magnificent. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday of Advent in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. God told Abraham that through him all the nations of the world would be blessed because he trusted and put his hope in God. The Old Testament spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. He would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. We too believe in God's promise to send Jesus again to this world to establish his kingdom upon the earth. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we all have in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. God of Abraham and Sarah, and all the patriarchs of old, you are our Father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready, and to place our hope in you. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your hope with others. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We will go unto the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Please be seated. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, those of you who were not a part of the general confession, I ask at this time that you please make an examination of your conscience before the altar of Almighty God. And now, let us recite the second form of the act of confession. 
I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus, promise to return to us in the fullness of time. As we hear his word, prepare us for his coming. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord, our justice. This is the word of God, of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy towards those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. By my holiness, I swore once for all, I will never be false to David. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord strengthen your heart to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel. According to St. Luke, Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness, and the anxieties of daily life. And that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Yek benje pafalonius Christus. The days are coming, say the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. These words are taken from the book of Jeremiah the prophet, chapter 33, verse 14. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, first of all, I wish, wish to welcome all of you 
on this your first day of school. I say this because for the next year, we will revisit the story of our faith and most importantly, learn of our salvation. As we begin a new liturgical year in our Christian Catholic tradition, on this first Sunday of Advent, we will hear a new cycle of readings that when heard and reflected upon will give us a deeper understanding of our relationship with God. We have the uniqueness as members of the Polish National Catholic Church to have the Word of God as one of our sacraments. We learn from our catechism that a sacrament brings about sanctifying grace, which means that the Word of God brings about a deeper holiness of the individual. So let us begin. From man's fall in the Garden of Eden, there was a deep longing of man to know and to reinstate oneself with God. Today, this longing is represented in the Advent wreath, which has four candles. Each candle represents 1,000 years of man's longing. The first candle that we lit today represents hope that God would send a deliverer, an anointed one, who would make things right with him and bring man back into the fold, back to the allegorical Garden of Eden. In these next four weeks, we will be reintroduced to the main characters of the Advent story. The prophets, who were God's spokesmen, who spoke of a deliverer. John the Baptist, who would be a witness to this deliverer. And Mary, who would give birth to this deliverer, Jesus, God's holy and anointed one. We read today from Jeremiah the prophet that God would fulfill the promise that he made to the house of Israel and Judah. We learn in the Old Testament that Jerusalem, in the times of King David, was a united kingdom, and that after the reign, after his reign, Israel was divided into two kingdoms north and south, Israel and Judah. But we also read in the Old Testament that in God's promise, he would unite these two kingdoms under one Messiah. This promise, first made to Abraham, would pass from generation to generation, from Abraham through Isaac, through Jacob, and finally, to our blessed Lord Jesus, a shoot from the house of David. For me, one of my most favorite scripture passages is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 40, and also 41, where Andrew, a disciple of John the Baptist goes to his brother Simon Peter and says, We have found the Messiah. Can you imagine how excited Andrew must have been when he declared to his older brother, We have found the Messiah. 
Now, there were many before Jesus who claimed to be a Messiah, but there was something in Andrew's voice where he spoke with conviction that when he was called and Peter was called and all the others, they left everything they had and they followed Jesus. So much pain, so much struggle, so much adversity from the time of deliverance of the children of Israel by Moses in Egypt, through the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 587 BC by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, to the occupation of Rome in Israel, there was a deep longing for that promise by God to be fulfilled. And so, my brothers and sisters, on this first Sunday of Advent, we find that the word hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. We know that through God's word, this expectation and desire was fulfilled. I hope that this Advent season may cause each of us to revisit our faith by hearing the story of our salvation as told to us in Holy Scripture. And may each of us rededicate ourselves to walk with God. May this new liturgical year be a year in which we all grow closer to this, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, and to be illuminated by the light of His grace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, merciful Father. You taught us in your holy word that the night is exhausted and the day is approaching. May we who offer this oblation awaken to live as children of the day and of the light. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, 
He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that salt moment. So sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again, he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. of refreshment to light and peace to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the fine example, we say with confidence,
and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving, saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Receive the mockery of the Lord.
and in the deepest truth he unites himself with me. Here are prayers that have sent this day to my majesty, that as many of us shall receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your son, may be filled with every blessing and grace for the same Christ and Lord. watchful. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the gift of your Son who comes to us in this heavenly mystery. Hasten the day when he comes again to judge the world and all people. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and darkness did, it, did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. Became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.
the name of Jesus be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I welcome you to church and I pray that God's blessings might be with all of you. I bring to mind some of the announcements. On Tuesday, December 4th, please be aware that I will be away from the parish. I will be attending a special meeting of the Eastern Diocesan Clergy, which will be held in Manchester, New Hampshire. I will be returning later in the evening. At 12.30 on Tuesday, there will be a rehearsal of the Echo Choir. I bring to mind that on Saturday, funeral services will be held here in church for the repose of the soul of our sister, Eleanor Farrick. Uh, viewing hours will be on Friday between 4 and 6. There will be prayer that will be offered at 6 o'clock on Friday. On Saturday morning, viewing to start at 9.30. And then by the time we come to the church, 11 o'clock, to celebrate Holy Mass for the repose of her soul. I bring to mind next Sunday, again, 9 o'clock, Holy Mass of the Eucharist. It will be the second Sunday of Advent. Other parish news. Uh, Pierogi, currently on cell, asked to see, please, uh, please see Peg Kostic or Alice Majewski. Also, we have some Gwonki left. Uh, they're frozen, and I wanted to point out that they're half price. Finally, that there are some 19, 20, uh, 2019 church calendars that are left. Price, $7 per calendar. Uh, Opotic, I, I checked with the company. I should be receiving it in the middle of next week. So it will be available uh, for next Sunday. Um, I also received yesterday, Sue, the parish envelopes. Thank you. So those are taken care of. Uh, next Saturday, of course, a funeral service for Eleanor. But I also wanted to put in the bulletin because I was asked by Father Adam Czarnecki, uh, Polish Christmas ornaments workshop will be held next Saturday from 9 a.m. until noon. We will be holding an uh, annual Christmas party next Sunday starting at 12 o'clock. I ask if, though, if there are those of you who have not seen Peg or Alice for reservations that you please do so. Also, I sent uh, via the email uh, for the adopt a family with a checklist of things that um, that they were asking for. And so there are copies in the vestibule of the church. All you need to do is put your name and there are um, spaces where you can basically place um, your, your donation to give us an idea of what will be coming through. Also, uh, monetary contributions will also be collected. Um, and again, next Sunday at our Christmas party, um, it's been announced for a couple of weeks now, we want to help our local veterans by collecting hats and gloves. There is a bin in the back of the church. Also monetary contributions will be collected and I call upon all our parishioners to consider helping with this Christmas project. Is there anything else? Hey. For anyone who has not signed up for the Christmas party yet, today is the deadline because you have to give them a head count. So please see Alice or myself and uh, make yourself sign up. And we also will, would appreciate your payment today. Uh, if not, you could pay Alice next week. But uh, we need to get this all tidied up because the party is a week from today. Thank you. Is there anything else? Please, um, Teresa. Yeah, I, I would ask for prayers uh, for two people. Um, my brother-in-law is now in hospice care, so I'd like prayers for, for Dick. And our friends uh, lost their father, Eliza, very suddenly over the weekend. And I would ask for prayers for Eliza and for her family. 
Also let us remember in prayer, Frank and Cindy Skrosky. Um, Frank is going through a diff difficult time. And of course, his wife, Cindy. I want to, because I don't want to come across like I take it for uh, granted, but I want to thank Eric, and I want to thank Bill Girardi, who have been very, very faithful in helping to record um, our weekly mass. I talked to Chris Collins, and there are a couple of things that we have in the works um, for additional taping. And finally, I want to thank my brother Wayne. Um, there, were, there was a concern about the lighting our, of our, the front of our church. And uh, Wayne was able, with his knowledge, to actually put a timer so that the lights will come on. We figured, what, about 5 o'clock, but that's adjustable. Yeah, so um, lights will come on and they will be on until about 10.30, but again, that can also be adjusted. And Wayne was able to put in brighter bulbs. And so um, I'm very happy that uh, we have you um, and your expertise. And Wayne, you've always come forward to help and may we all take your example of dedication. And again, I wish, wish to thank all who basically have given of their time and their effort and their love for the church. Also, we will remember in prayer, uh, is, is Jenny out of Buckley? No. I saw Jenny this past week and I ask that you please also remember her in your prayers as well as for our sh also our other shut-ins, that God's blessings might be with all of them. God bless. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 